We don't know what it is technically, but we know what, he want, what we want it to be from a user experience point of view. In some ways, our view is that it would be the first user-aware network. You could call it the worldwide user-aware network, which means it's going to be user-centric. But users will include, of course, the devices they attach to that are not other people. There's no point in a machine talking to a machine if it doesn't talk to a user. So it's a user-centric network. But I've got some ideas about what that has to be to do that, because we have to build a network with tremendously different characteristics to be user-centric. So I've sort of got eight ideas, and I, we share these between us back and forth as we define this future. But these are not the technologies that what we need it to do. So one is, I think, instead of static configuration, it's got to be dynamically adaptable. That makes sense. People and machines are moving from one place to another with different needs at each point in time. Beyond that, instead of fixed capacity and based on hardware boxes, it'll be based on dynamically scalable software resources more than ever before. In, instead of being centralized, it'll be distributed because the user capacity is at the edge. We're going to distribute the network and the compute resources to control them. Instead of best effort for everything, it's going to be better effort for those things that need it. Instead of one spectrum type, it's going to be any spectrum type. I very much like Wolf's comment uh, that the spectrum is, uh, will be more scarce than oil. But maybe if you combine oil and gas and wind, you get the right answer. So it's going to be any spectrum type. High frequency, low frequency, licensed, unlicensed, shared, and dedicated. Instead of one type of waveform, LTE or Wi-Fi, it's going to adapt and have different types of waveforms that allows machines and people to communicate efficiently over the same type of network. It's going to be people-centric, and it'll be anything enabled. That means the devices. And then, of course, instead of energy hungry, as uh, Marie Noel said, it's got to be energy efficient and maybe even <coughs> harvest energy from the environment. These are sort of the attributes I have in mind for this network. But think of the breadth I've just described. That's a tremendous amount of research that has to go in before we're ready to, ready, to, uh, ready to develop that network. And that's really the reason for this 5G PPP, is to actually put the funding behind it on an industry level, on an EU level, to allow Europe again to be the leader in defining technologies of the future and building those networks. But with a collaboration between the vendor community in Europe and uh, the European government. And that's why uh, we think it's a fantastic idea pre-competitive research and collaboration to define this amazing future of the worldwide user-aware network. Thanks very much.